Jenna Sapinoso is the sole Montreal sales rep for Sake Importer Metropolitan Premium Wines and Sakes, one of a handful of sake private import agencies in the city. While the company headquarters is in Toronto, the agency has been growing its presence steadily in Quebec as ramen shops and izakayas have boomed here. Many are international or national chains that already have locations in Toronto, and when they come to Quebec, they bring their sake importers. But not all the sakes on those restaurant and bars lists are available in Quebec already. That's because importers have to bring in all alcohol through provincial liquor corporations. In Quebec, that's the SAQ, the Société des Alcools du Québec, which tastes and approves all products before they can be imported by agencies. There are about a million rules about what can and can't be brought in and how, and it can be hard enough in normal times to get a product approved for sale, whether that's by the case to be sold to restaurants or by the bottle on the SAQ shelves. But now, with COVID-19, private import agencies have been allowed to sell mixed cases to consumers. The idea is that people aren't currently able to get the variety of wines and spirits that they're used to accessing at restaurants, which often work with private import agencies. Those products are not always sold on the SAQ store shelves. So when import agencies saw their revenues tank as restaurants closed in March, private consumers were their best option. Now, I should say that you could always order a case of wine or sake from these companies. So the only thing that's changed is that you can now buy mixed cases that the agencies have put together themselves. Those cases don't include all the bottles that a company imports. So you wouldn't get to choose every bottle you want in the case. But it is a special opportunity in sake where bottles are usually more expensive than wine and you might not want 12 of the same sake at $70 each, plus taxes and agency fees. Sounds complicated? I know. But that's why I've invited Jenna on today to talk you through Sake 101, everything from how to drink sake to why to drink sake to why to drink sake now. And if you're a sake beginner, we'll recommend some bottles to start that are a great deal right now. And if you're a sake pro, there are some bottles for you too, plus some free webinar tastings with brewers and experts. Excited? Thirsty? Wondering what we'll do because it's bad etiquette to pour your own sake and we'll be talking over Zoom? Yes, me too, all of the above, but here we go. Here's Jenna Sapinoso of Metropolitan Premium Wines and Sakes. Okay. Hi, Jenna. Thanks for coming on today. Hello. I'd kind of like to know how things are going for you right now that you've transitioned to selling more to consumers than to restaurants. It was definitely um, uh, a lot of change. We've had to diversify most of our, um, our clients are the licensees, and that would be uh, before COVID, uh, about 95% of so 95% uh, restaurants is your, yeah. is your clientele. Yeah. Okay. So then you're down to 5% leftover clientele that you've had before personal, I guess, personal clients, individuals, exactly. Um, exactly. and you have to expand that. that. Mm-hmm. Okay. And wow. So now, now, with, uh, um, after, um, now three months, three months of, uh, I can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> home, um, learning what we can do to uh, pivot. Um, now our numbers are uh, about like 65, 35. Now we're starting to see uh, restaurants uh, that are open, you know, for delivery and takeout um, and soon really open um, start to order more. They're starting to see what works uh, in mm-hmm. terms of like uh, what sells as far as sake. And sake is a hard sell in general, uh, especially here um, in Quebec as it's still quite new. Um, but luckily I've spent a lot of time with a lot of these restaurants and their managers and their staff and a lot of them are very knowledgeable. So they're able to sort of um, share the products. And we uh, at Metropolitan applauds all the restaurants um, who have been, uh, you know, been able to sell their sake really, really well um, with their foods. So. Wow. Okay. So I definitely want to talk about what is selling really, really well. But uh, before we do that, um, I-, I should ask you what you're drinking because it is a happy hour. Ah, hi. Okay. So I am drinking the Yoshinogawa Kome Dry Honjozo. Uh, from Niigata Prefecture. Um, I actually just had uh, the first session of my WSET Level 3 course today where we all tasted uh, this sake, well, together virtually. Um, But this one is a really great uh, classic uh, dry style sake. Um, Since it's from Niigata, uh, 
The water there is very, very clean. And the rice that they use is all local. Um, it's called the Goyaku Mengoku. Um, say that five times fast. <laughs> no, um, thank you. <laughs> but, it creates, but it creates a really, really beautiful um, rice and, and sort of a, a bread cereal aroma. And the mouthfeel is very, very crisp and clean. So this, this one will be great chilled room temperature and especially warm. Yeah, so, okay, so oh, warm. what are you drinking? Oh, up uh, and um, okay. So I just wanted to check the warm temperature is okay for some sakes then, yes? Hi, hi. Okay, yeah. so there's all these misconceptions that we're, we're definitely going to get to. Um, you might know this one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I wanted to drink something from your agency. I think that one is in one of your mixed cases, right? The one you're drinking, yeah. the Honjozo? Yeah. Uh, so we can talk about that a bit later. This one is not. I wanted to drink something from your agency, but I realized that the last time I bought from you, I ended up drinking it all. So I don't have anything from you left. And I have yeah, some from yeah. other great agencies in Montreal. I have some, some from Bacchus uh, 76 uh, here, but uh, I, I didn't want to drink one of those with you. It <laughs> felt inappropriate. So this is from Arizona. I recently gave your company one of these bottles um, to try because you can't get it here. It's an award-winning uh, Junmai Ginjo. Uh, it's Nama unpasteurized, which we can also talk about later, uh, but basically premium. There's no alcohol added, uh, and it's small batch, handmade in Holbrook, Arizona. So it won an award where it was voted the best sake made outside of Japan. I forget what year that was, but it's marketing itself. Oh, best of class also in the Los Angeles International Wine Competition. Anyway, uh, mm -hmm. it was just to have something to cheers you. But, but actually, so I noticed you're in a wine glass there. I have a wine glass. I also have a small sake glass, and then I have another sake glass uh, shaped like this that I uh, was given actually by an agency. And so I'm wondering what you recommend I drink this in. Uh, well, since you're having a, a nama sake, uh, definitely the wine glass is the way to go because uh, it's going to have, uh, typically nama sakes have a very fresh, uh, uh, bright aroma, fruity aroma. So you definitely want to like um, uh, obtain that uh, when you're enjoying. Uh, the little ochocos, the sake cups are great. I, I love them, especially because they're so small and you know, it, and when you go to Japan, you have this tiny cup and it's always full and it's great. But if you're, mm. uh, if you're really wanting to, to know the profile of the sake, um, the wine glass is a really great way to go. Um, you, you smell it the same way, you would drink it the same way as you would wine. Absolutely. You okay. look at it the same way. Uh, um, most sake can be uh, quite clear. This sake is very clear because they do uh, charcoal filtering. Oh, yeah, mine's a little darker than yours. Yeah, come by. Yeah, and I'm not sure. Maybe because um, uh, I'm, not uh, I'm not sure if it's maybe the filtering that they might be doing, if it's like lightly filtered, uh, uh, charcoal filtered. Uh, but yes, I do see like a, a lemon green sort of uh, tint yeah, there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that sake. Okay. Oh, so <laughs> yes, I can't wait to try it. Thank you so much. You're very, very welcome. Um, okay, so let's get back to uh, talking about what is selling well. I'm curious about the uh, Montreal right now. You said more restaurants are selling more sake uh, and then they're going to reopen restaurants soon. Um, are you expecting more sales within those restaurants and specifically what has sold really well from your current portfolio? Well, here in, uh, here in Montreal, uh, you know, the, when the, when the uh, pandemic started and you know, uh, the city shut down, a lot of the restaurants shut down. We were unsure of like what was going to happen on their side, but you know, we wanted to let them know that we would support them. And little by little, we saw the restaurants opening up, especially, you know, the, the core Japanese uh, and sushi restaurants like mm -hmm. Uni, Okini, um, uh, Ryu uh, opened up a little bit later. Uh, but you start to see that they, they've gotten their whole takeout delivery, um, um, options down and so with us we were trying to support them so some uh, some restaurants of course will offer promotion promotional price um, you know maybe 30% off a bottle um, I've seen uh, a lot of really great prices like no uh, restaurant nosy 
uh, he has amazing prices on uh, his uh, sake uh, collection. Wow. Um, we see uh, packages together. I think Ryu offers like a nice uh, sashimi uh, nigiri selection with a sake to go with it. So those, uh, those end up, you know, letting people bring the experience home. Um, and we've seen things as far as uh, people having bottle shops. So once you like go oh, really? in to pick up, uh, pick up uh, some food, you know, you see the whole selection of bottles and you're just like, well, I have to, I can't not leave with one of these. Right. Um, and they're so beautiful too, these bottles. Oh yeah, absolutely. They're, they're always, they're quite different. They could be pretty traditional style looking like this Kome dry or, mm. or like really sleek and beautiful and modern. Mm. Um, like our Gasan sakes. I just happen to have three right here that I use in yeah, decoration see. for my house. So if you want to see, uh, you know, oh, yeah. this is no, such a see, beautiful they're, traditional. They're really great collector's item, you know. Yeah. You, uh, a lot of the times uh, when I was waiting tables back in California, um, we had a lot of really beautiful bottles and I would actually keep them for, you know, mm. a little vase or, or just like a yeah. memento. Some yeah, well, often there is a memory associated with it, especially when they're pricier bottles. Like the idea of going to a restaurant, like when people are buying a bottle of sake at a restaurant, that could be $150 for maybe a $50 bottle from, from you guys if there's a three times markup on it. Uh, so for me, when I, when I hear people say, oh, I don't want to buy from private import, and it's like, well, are you going to buy it at restaurants? Well, maybe not because I'll get a bottle of wine because it's cheaper. They're, you're, they're missing out on a huge opportunity there. So I find it really cool that you're getting more sales from restaurants right now when people are more open and maybe trying something new. Um, and specifically, what sakes are selling well? Are they the cheaper ones? Are they the more expensive ones? Can you give me some examples? Well, definitely the, the you know, mid-range prices uh, of sakes um, um, are doing really well um, and sell often, you know, we get orders like maybe every week for, for those items. Wow. Uh, the 300 milliliter formats are always great. You know, yeah. there's a lot of people that are novice to sake. So it, when you have like a, a two people, you order a set of uh, food and then you have a 300 milliliter to share. Um, and then that's when they get hooked. And now we're yeah. seeing a lot of orders for 720 milliliters and that's mm -hmm. sake is like the, uh, Urakasumi Honjikomi Honjozo. It's a um, mouthful. I know no one's going to remember that. I will put that up in, a, in, the, in the show well, notes. So it's a, it's a great um, classic uh, sake. Um, it's not actually a typical Honjozo. Um, honjozo is a is a, a grade of sake where there's a little bit of added distilled alcohol, uh, and the polishing is up to uh, seventy percent. Um, uh, but it's an all-arounder, just like Home Dry, it will be great chilled, room temperature, and warm. And it is an amazing price for such a high quality sake. How much is it usually from you guys if you buy direct? From us, it's about $22. Oh my gosh, bottle. it's nothing. That's so cheap for, for, yeah, for $7.20. Yeah, or? if you imagine the uh, Ishobins, the 1.8 liters, uh, wow. you know, those are only like 50 bucks. And uh, you can have like a really fun party you're going to have that a couple we're having parties <laughs> or a couple good picnics. And now well, eventually when we're allowed to, you know, have up to 10 people inside, there you go. That's your celebratory bottle. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I actually, I do have, we do have uh, some clients, uh, that sell more sake now. Oh, really? Um, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, talking to Hiroshi from Auto Bistro and he's mm. got a really great collection of sake and knowledge of sake. And he actually holds one of, um, our, uh, rare sake is called the Urakasumi M, uh, which is a Junmai Daiginjo, um, very highly polished, pure rice sake that's only available in four cities, um, New York, London, there's only one restaurant in Toronto, and now Spain. But because a uh, uh, Benoit uh, Champagne from uh, Urakasumi, I think you met him at Kampai, because he's from here, he's the export manager. Um, he made an exception for me. I really wanted to bring it here. Um, and uh, and Auto Bistro has that, you know. And, wow. and, uh, How much is that bottle? They have a promotion on the price. Oh, wow. Okay. 30% the, the off. Or, yeah. Is it 30% off there? Uh, I think he usually runs at uh, thirty percent off. Okay. Um, like sometimes I, I I watch his Instagram just to see like okay, 
let's wait until he goes 50% off the beers. Right. And, go and then go. <laughs> yeah. So can people, um, they can get it then from Auto Bistro. Can they get it directly from you or no? Oh yeah, you yeah. can. Um, of course, it's going to have to be either uh, in a mixed case form of some sort, um, which, which uh, you know, we have to uh, like, we're still learning, you know, how to, how to, uh, navigate our way through that. Yeah. Um, since it's very new. Um, mm -hmm. but if you would like a full case, that's, that's mm -hmm. good. The best thing is if you have a friend that likes sake, you know, <laughs> a couple of friends. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the best to, to share, share a case. With and if you yeah. don't have friends that will share if that you, don't have friends, you, you need, friends. yeah, exactly that. <laughs> and you need new friends. <laughs> so, so let's step back a second. I think we've jumped ahead for a lot of people on, on Junmai Ginjo, uh, and Ginjo and all these fancy words for the rice polishing. So basically rice is graded, uh, and sakis are graded according to the polish of rice. Um, and we have Junmai, we have Junmai Ginjo and we have Junmai Dai Ginjo. It doesn't mean that one's better better than the other. It just refers to the polish and people's individual preferences. Yes. Am I correct in that? Yes. Okay. I always Excellent. tell like, uh, when, whenever I give like mini sake lessons, I always tell people, you know, how wine is kind of like you have, uh, uh, the, the, the more, more sophisticated and, uh, uh, um, like stacking where sake is, I like to see it all next to each other because you know you could uh, you could really love that uh, really elegant Junmai Dai Ginjo that will cost an arm and a leg, but um, I really love like uh, a really simple Junmai uh, or Tokubetsu Junmai um, that's made from this tiny brewery um, that's family run they, that they, they only make like very little of. And I keep uh, uh, that bottle like on my counter for the entire winter, you know, if I, if I want to have a bottle of sake or, you know, if you're, if it's summertime and, and you're feeling like having some oysters or, or sitting on the terrace, like you can have like a really beautiful floral ginjo, um, you know, that's, that's not too, um, that's not too expensive either right. or, you know, mid range, um, and it, and it just depends. It depends on uh, what you're feeling, what you're eating, who you're with, what the weather is like. Yeah, definitely. And I think there is such a wide range and, and uh, in, in sakes and in flavors and in pairings. Like if you're, if you're a foodie, if you're a chef and you've never gotten into sakes, you're going to see more pairings on tasting menus around the world lately. And that's because it is very versatile. It's, it's often lower acidity than wines. And, and that can pair really well with big flavors, with small flavors, with subtle flavors. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. And I think it's maybe just a price and, a, and an awareness and a... a access issue for for a lot of people so let's talk about access then you're dealing a lot with the SAQ right now and that's changed a lot with the mixed cases and where you're dealing specifically to consumers you have to deliver to consumers directly yes the SAQ uh, mixed case program requires agents to pick up assemble and deliver to the customers um, directly okay. so that's so why you can't just have whatever in the case it's very specific and set yeah, we uh, we thought about it. Um, it is possible. Say if like four different people want like three kinds of sakes or or the other way around, you know, uh, um, it's it's possible. We can it is we can do it. Uh, but we pre-selected uh, um, a few offerings just so just uh, really because not a, it's like the awareness thing, right? So not mm -hmm. a lot of people know uh, too much about sake in general yet. In Montreal, um, but it's growing. In Montreal. So the, the mini selection that we have was kind of like a, it's like a little tasting set. So okay. it's uh, four different grades, uh, four different um, prefectures. It's a really great like taste it, tasting, okay. like if you're, if you're getting started. That's um, the mini selection 12 by 300 milliliters at 225 for the case, right? So that might seem ex excessive to some people, but there are wine agencies bringing in, you know, $600 cases for, for 12 bottles of, of 720 milliliter wine, but obviously it's a different product. Um, and if I look at that mini selection, I see the Desai 45 Junmai Daiginjo there, which is kind of the a gold standard around the world for Junmai Daiginjo. So that's a very interesting way to access that. You also have a Nigori in there. You have a Junmai and yeah. then you have the, the Honjozo. So like you said, it, it is 
quite diverse. What I like is you also have a fruit fantasy case, which is, <laughs> sounds to me like a headache waiting to happen. But if you want something very sweet and very juicy, and I know you, you have quality too. So it's not, you know, just like sugar and, and fake fruit added to things. That's an option. And then you have the mix case, uh, the six bottles of 720. Um, Oh, uh, where, uh, is this the one where the, the Fonds de Secure au Travailleur, like when he goes towards the Montreal restaurant workers? Oh, yes, really fun? Yes. So we have, uh, we have two sets, we have a few sets, three sets of six packs, uh, which are kind of an essential pack and then uh, our featured, uh, featured sakes. And we decided to combine those for like a, a 12 pack, um, almost like a sake survival pack. Um, but we thought it would be great to, you know, to partner up with, uh, uh, the Montreal Restaurant Workers Relief Fund, um, and work, you know, work together and we will donate, uh, for every, for every case sold, we will, we'll donate a dollar, um, per bottle to the fund. Okay. So $12 a case, if it's a, tw a case of 12, right? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Understand. No. And you have a great selection there. You have the, uh, the Toji no Banjaku, which is the brewmaster's choice, Honjozo, which is very accessible. You have the Masumi uh, Yawa Raka Junmai Ginjo, which I think I've had at uh, Marusan a number of times, which is also <laughs> very delicious. And then the Urakasumi Zen Ginjo, not the, the high grade one, but the, the, a little more affordable one from Urakasumi, also a beautiful uh, sake. Um, so I feel like that's 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 who would who would buy that that one? That so that's someone who already knows sake or doesn't know sake or or what? I think it would be the you know the person who does know a little bit of sake. I think it would be um, perhaps our um, our Kampai Montreal attendees who okay. have always had a love for sake and we're, you know, just want to stock up for the summer. Right. Um, wine, wine connoisseurs, perhaps, mm. um, if they're interested in uh, taking this time to learn a little bit more about sake. Yeah. Um, um, but, you know, what I've been hearing from our clients is that the sake just kind of goes fast and then they mm. end up saying like, I'll probably be ordering a, a little bit more from you soon. Mm. Um, which is great. And then yeah, uh, a lot of customers tend to like share with each other too. So sake really is a thing to be shared. As I mentioned in the intro, I felt very awkward pouring myself sake. <laughs> um, so what are some of the etiquette surrounding sake that you can maybe ignore or you have to pay attention to? Um, well, uh, the only thing I would say uh, for, for sake is, is really just treat it like a wine. I always uh, uh, treated it like a wine, but when I visited Japan, you know, I noticed that my glass was always full. So <laughs> whenever I'm at an event or if there's sake on the table, I'm always like, just like very conscious. Um, uh, but you have to pour everyone a, a a glass and then you can serve yourself but um if you're ever in japan their their eye is on you too so they take the bottle from you and pour from you too which wow. i think is very very um nice hmm. um tell me a little bit more about uh selling and working with the SAQ right now that's been a transition for you um i i know that it uh, they're, they're interested in quality. They're interested in getting consumers what they want. And it's kind of like a chicken and the egg in terms of demand. You know, if people are demanding sake, they're going to want to bring in more sakes. And I know sake is a growing, um, what's the, not bracket, but there's a term for it, a growing category. category. Yeah. At the SAQ. Um, and what has COVID done to that? And has their view of sake changed? Um, you know, uh, we, uh, with the with the, the pandemic in general, with the situation, they've had to do a lot of restructuring um, themselves. So a lot of their logic, uh, especially in the beginning, was sort of uh, sort of all over the place. You know, we were we were just everyone was trying to figure out, okay, how are we going to get the product? Um, you know, with being the most like like in the safest way possible. Um, uh, and execute really well. Um, um, and, uh, but, but they 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 know we're here. Um, they have, they've also restructured in that there's a new category manager for sake. Um, 
but with the Kampai Montreal Festival that started in 2018 with the Association Sake Quebec, um, um, with uh, the other agencies like Lollerie or Trois um, and Bacchus uh, and more, um, we've been able to, to have like a good, uh, you know, foot in the door uh, to say like, hey, yeah, we're a, a real category, um, you know, we, we're, we have a lot of really good stuff. And I remember 2018, we were at uh, 100 products in, entirety, in the entirety of Quebec. And 2019, we reached 200 mm. um, sake mm. products. So private imports, it is definitely growing. And, but you will also start seeing um, some really, really great premium sakes on the SAQ shelves. Mm. So I was going to ask that. Why, why are there so few sakes on the shelves when you can get so many in restaurants? Um, I think, I think it just, uh, you know, uh, Quebec in general is just a very, like, a uh, uh, big wine culture. And so I think, uh, I think I read somewhere that the SAQ uh, imports the most French and Italian wines, or did I hear that from one of your podcasts or something like that? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, Might have been Caitlin, yeah. <laughs> uh, we mainly bring French and Italian wines mm. here. So I think that's been like the, the biggest focus uh, of the SAQ. So now that they, they see the numbers, they see that private imports is doing well and that, um, that sake has, uh, um, ha the sales in general in 2018 have gone up probably 40%. Wow. Um, okay. so that's why they were like, okay, well, we will welcome sake, um, more sake choices. Uh, onto the SAQ retail channel. Mm, okay. Um, what is your most popular sake that you're selling out of currently? Oh, la la. Um, <laughs> actually, probably the most popular uh, sake is not actually a sake. It's, uh, it's one of the fruits. Um, it's the Momo peach. Uh, oh. Yes, all of our fruit liquors, um, we have Momo peach, Nashi Asian pear. They're all made with natural fruit. They're absolutely delicious. And I think in the summertime, um, people are just extra, uh, want, love that uh, fruity deliciousness. So that would be probably top selling. The next one would be uh, the Masumi Yawaraka and then uh, the Urakasumi Honjikomi that we talked about earlier. Okay. And that's in, those are both in the mixed cases that we mentioned before. That's good to know. Um, so the, the Masumi is, but the uh, Honjikomi is now um, unfortunately out. Oh, uh, okay. We do have the Urakasumi Zen. Okay, good. So you're constantly getting shipments. Are you going to get more shipments of those? Yes, yes. So now that uh, now that things are moving, everyone sort of uh, gotten things together. It's like we're all getting stuff together, but every day is new, and you're still like getting thrown something different, right? Mm -hmm. And you're but spending your whole life on the phone with the SAQ trying to organize <laughs> everything. I'm sure. If I'm like not on the phone with the SAQ. I'm like on Zoom, you know, like checking out like uh, uh, some cool webinar. But yeah, I guess a lot of things have changed. But since uh, we've been able, like successful at moving a lot of um, products, uh, we're now starting to see that the SAQ is allowing us to order more. So, um, so you know, we, we will have some newer items and some classic items coming in. Um, at the same time, uh, we have a couple sakes coming into the SAQ. So we have a lot of stuff going on um, right now. <laughs> That's very exciting. Um, I, I want to play a little uh, lightning round with you. Are you okay with that? Let's do this. Wait. <laughs> That's a good plan. Um, <laughs> oh, also, uh, you, you did mention the online webinars. I know that uh, Metropolitan, your company, does have uh, online webinars. How can people hear about those if they want to be part? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, you know, uh, the best way is probably to uh, follow the Metro Metropolitan uh, Quebec account, um, Metro Wine uh, Sake QC um, on Instagram. Um, if not, you can uh, shoot me an email and I would love to share our events with you guys. Okay. Um, 
like Kampai, but obviously that's not going to be an in-person festival that's maybe uh, going to transition? Is that happening in Quebec? Kampai Montreal will, will most likely not happen um, in person. Uh, you know, uh, over in Ontario, they have the, like, uh, their event, Kampai Toronto, uh, which is, um, uh, has been going on for seven, eight years now, and they're going to be hosting a virtual uh, festival uh, where they're going to have a, a panel of um, sake experts and uh, chats with uh, live from the breweries. Okay, um, and I guess anybody could could tune in to those. You don't have to be in yeah, Toronto. That one's free. Um, so if you go on the Instagram account and you head to the links, you can uh, you can check out the links there to to register for free. Great. Yeah, no free tastings, unfortunately. But uh, unfortunately, no. But you can you can always access great sake otherwise. Okay, so lightning round. Um, I've tried to make these shorter answers. They're not all going to be one word answers, but uh, I, the whole concept of the lightning round often goes out the window. Um, but I think the first one might work. Okay. Sake 101. What's the biggest sake misconception? Um, that I would be, uh, I, I have two answers. Okay. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of people think like sake is super alcoholic. Uh, but it's really not. It's a it's a food um, beverage. Um, it's a little bit stronger than wine, usually um, 15 to 17 percent. Um, uh, so if you're scared of it, try not to be, but do eat it with food, drink it with food. Okay. Um, the second is that hot sake is bad sake. Um, that is not true, you're saying. Which is not true, especially when it's like negative 20 outside and you know you just want something like warm for your soul um hot sake got that rep because back in the day oh my god this is not lightning back uh, after world war ii uh, you know they started mass producing sake and they just dumped a bunch of um added alcohol in there and then um called it sake and then um you know everyone just kind of uh warmed it up and and it never really tasted great um but so the warming up masks the flavor that was the idea well the, yeah i guess i guess you could say that um but it really isn't there's some sakes that have like a really great umami and very great earthiness that actually open up if you warm it up so mm. typically this could be like a junmai or honjozo um uh, not necessarily like a fruity ginjo but uh but i would definitely try warm sake um at some point um, okay. What about like Desai 45? Would you not warm that up and why? No, no, it's, it's a very delicate sake. Okay. Um, uh, and it, it's a very like more silky, uh, fruity profile. Um, a Junmai Deginjo, typically you would like to just take it out of the fridge and you could put it on the table. Okay. And I essentially, have... essentially sometimes when you're drinking a sake, you're going to have, uh, uh, two or three different kinds of sakes because you're going to have it chilled and then room temperature. Mm. And a lot of the times when, uh, when I was uh, serving tables, I always asked them, want me to warm the rest of this up? Especially when they're getting to the heavier and more um, like meat or fish courses. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. I just had this vision of every Desai fan screaming at me. Like, no, you would <laughs> never warm that up. But I had to ask. I had to just double check. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, what's the best sake you've had recently? Um... It, it's it's funny because I was actually uh, when I went back to it, we unfortunately this is a sake that we don't have here it's in Ontario, but it's a it's a from a brewery that we do carry. Um, do you know the Tadorigawa sakes? Mm -mm. Uh, well, Tadorigawa is a uh, like a family brewery um, about 150 years old, located in Ishikawa Prefecture, which is um, which is right by the Sea of Japan. Um, really, really known for their traditional Yamaha uh, styles, uh, but very, very elegant. Um, I had the Yu Yoshidagura Junmai Yamaha that was also a Genshu. And for me, when I first I, when I first tasted it, it was just uh, the end of our holiday dinner, and you know, I just drinking whatever is given to me. The bottle was beautiful, but when they told me it was from um, from that it was a genshu, that it was an undiluted sake. 
so no no water added I was so surprised because the sake was super fruity and fresh kind of like a nama um, like that nama uh, fresh taste that that everyone loves um, uh, but also a Yamaha so the Yamaha meth is a method where um, instead of adding lactic acid uh, to the to the fermentation they they let it build naturally um, so Yamaha, when you see that on a label, when you hear it anywhere, uh, that method uh, means that the sake will have a little bit more depth to it. Are there certain sakes that should only be with certain foods or maybe what's the best pairing for your, any, any sake? Just name one. For any sake? Oh man, it's so much fun to pair sake um, and it's so easier and much easier than wine, I would say, because of because of the umami factor, mm. you know, sake um, is simply rice, um, koji, which is a, a mold that uh, uh, creates the enzyme, um, water, and yeast. Um, and so definitely I would say um, fresh fish, uh, uh, as in like uh, sashimi, nigiri. Um, uh, in terms of like sushi or, 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 or sashimi nigiri, uh, a, like a nice dry, a, a, a dry junmai, which is pure rice sake, I would love with like a red tuna or like a buttery yellowtail, uh, something like medium fatty. Um, something like uh, the Yamaha that I just talked about. Uh, typically Yamaha's aren't as fruity as the, the last sake I talked about. They usually have like a, a really like deep earthiness to it, or typically, yes. But Yamaha's I would love with like a pizza. I would hmm. love that. Just um, like, a, like a pepperoni pizza or something like that. There you go. So um, it can go with spicy too. It doesn't have to be uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, and spicy, you could get uh, really creative um, too, you know, uh, you could do like spicy fried chicken with like a nigori uh, cloudy sake. That could be like, because cloudy sake is a bit sweeter, um, mm -hmm. uh, or a namasake. Yeah. Um, something like a ginjo, like a, a premium sake that's uh, been polished to about 60%, uh, which are, tend to be more crisp, um, and uh, and clean, something like that with uh, uh, maybe uh, like ceviche or something. It would okay. be something nice like uh, raw raw fish. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's a there's a lot of fun pairings. I just uh, what did I I do? Um, I had a jerk chicken with the dewazakura dewasansan gijo. And the Dewa San San uh, is very like, has a nice green apple crispness. And it just cut all that sort of like, like, oil, like not oiliness, no, but, but the greasy, the, the, the fattiness. Yeah. Yeah. The, that you want to cut through. Complimented. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, what's the best place for people to learn about sake if they want to learn more? We will be having a, a, a webinar with Keith from Masumi and uh, Michael Tremblay uh, about Nagano Prefecture coming okay. up. And Michael teaches the WSET uh, sake classes out of Toronto, right? Mm -hmm. So Michael sake is, samurai. Yeah, he's a sake samurai. That's a real thing, um, don't worry. I didn't make that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's one of the best uh, sake educators um, uh, I've ever met. Um, but there, you know, John Gauntner, who is uh, one of the most uh, uh, really great sake educators. He teaches his uh, sake prof certified sake professional course um, over the last 20 years. And he just has a really great charisma. Mm -hmm. He's been uploading YouTube um, videos. Um, just check him out. His name is John Gardner. He's really, uh, he's really, really cool. And then there's a uh, Natsuki from London uh, who tends to have some Instagram live sessions, and she's also a W set educator as well. Um, but other than that, I would say uh, locally here in Montreal, uh, I know the ETHQ uh, just had Marc Andre Nadeau, uh, the uh, sake song from Jatoba and A5 Hospitality Group. Um, he just taught a, a course there, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Um, or you can just ask me. I would like love. I love 
talking about sake. I love um, drinking sake. So if you ever have questions, um, we have a lot of, uh, and if you're ever visiting a restaurant, see if, uh, ask if someone knows. Definitely, if you're going to go to places like uh, uh, Juni uh, or Oro or, or Hanzo um, or Mikado, they're going to have someone there that's like really stoked on sake and can teach you all about it. That's exciting. Um, speaking of being very stoked on sake, what's your dream sake? Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, my dream would be to go back in time to 2009 when I had the Masumi Arabashiri Namazake, the unpasteurized sake. It's the first press of sake um, that they get and they don't pasteurize it at all. Um, And it really, it was the beginning of my sake drinking days. And I remember because I love this sake so much, I sold all of it. And I didn't understand the concept of seasonality. So Arabashiri mm-hmm. comes out in the springtime. Uh, we have a Hia Roshi that comes out in the fall and the autumn season. Um, and when it was gone for six months, I was very, very sad. Uh, but it was such a time where, you know, I was sharing, you know, converting people into sake drinkers and, and learning about sake myself. Mm-hmm. That was in San Francisco? Yeah, yeah, that was in San Francisco. Mm, Wish we had it here. Uh, (laughs) um, If you're not drinking sake, what are you usually drinking? Um, Root beer. I love root beer. (laughs) Like, I love, I can, I can drink it every day. I don't drink it every day, but I really love it. Um, It's delicious. Uh, And that's, (laughs) that was a good lightning round question. I think we can move on. (laughs) It was a good answer. Um, (laughs) I know you do jujitsu. Have you ever combined jujitsu and sake? This is a good yes or no. Oh man. (laughs) Um, Maybe not. Maybe it's not a yes or no. (laughs) I would say like, maybe, uh, maybe one of those times, I feel like they kind of just like fade into each other. You know, you have like a really, really hard day of training and you're like, oh man, I'm going to go for a glass of sake. And you have that transition. You've probably seen a lot of my jujitsu friends at um, sake and vinyl night at Marusan. Right. Um, uh, or, you know, you're drinking sake all night long and then you have that morning training and you're just like, oh, wow, I just, I don't, it doesn't feel like normal, but yeah, it still feels <laughs> great. <laughs> um, some people say you can't get hungover from sake. Uh, if, um, can you get hungover from good sake or is that just bad sake or are you just getting hungover because you're drinking too much in general? I think hangovers from sake happen when you don't eat properly. Okay. And, you know, sake goes really well with McDonald's at two in the morning as well. So does it? <laughs> does it really? <laughs> Is that your comfort food? Please tell me it's not your comfort food. <laughs> not no, good for your well, jujitsu training the next day. I mean, if you're like by yourself and you're drinking like, uh, you know, the 1.8 liters, probably not a great idea, but I think sake is meant to be uh, drank with food. Okay. Know? So what is your, your comfort food? Oh man, my comfort food. Um, well, since my like husband is super French, I've uh, come to love all cheeses, um, um, any cheese, uh, uh, French, Quebec, California, all of them. And so I think that that's, that would really like, that's like make me happy food. Do you have an ultimate cheese pairing with sake? Oh, yes. Um, uh, I would love the um, Masumi Nanago. It's uh, Yamaha Junmai Daiginjo, uh, one of their uh, higher end sakes. Uh, it went so well with uh, Beaufort. It's a, uh, it's like a special, like, like medium. It's almost like a Gruyere, but it it has it has that Gruyere sort of uh, texture. Mm. But it was a it was a beautiful combination. We also had like a, a plate of. Um, like a, a nice, like very smelly Parmesan that went really well. And I think it's the Yamaha factor. To the Yamaha funkiness. So much umami. And yeah. so the, when you have umami and umami together, it's just mm. very, very nice. 
That sounds magical. Um, you're probably <laughs> getting hungry because you've been here for a little while. What are you going to eat when this is over? Oh my God. When everything's over, I'm going to have a root beer for sure at uh, Chez Tuzignon. Ah, uh, the Cascroute with uh, Faita and... Um, does he own that one or, or are they just backers? I don't remember. But anyway, yeah, up there, up north. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, haven't, I haven't had a poutine in so long and I love it so much. Um, but you can't really take it to go, right? Because like the crispy fry and gravy ratio just, just sort gets of gets lost. So when you're mm -hmm. like sit, sit there and you're served. Mm -hmm. But you could picnic. You could just grab it and then just step to the side. You're two meters apart and then start. That's true. That's true. I'll just like grab it and then stand outside of the restaurant. And eat it. I'm sure you would not be the first. <laughs> I'll just say that. Poutine is a hard one right now. My heart goes out to poutine makers. Some people yeah. really like it soggy though. That is an acquired yeah. taste. You know, I, I, to come to think of it, I actually don't mind too, especially, you know, after a night of drinking sake as well. Like, that's probably the best thing. Okay. How do brewers not just be constantly hung over? Because we talked about the, uh, the Toji no Banjaku, the, the brewmaster's choice. So that's the sake that they're drinking quite often at the brewery. Um, especially right now, I don't know if production methods or production has changed in any way, because they're always so careful about hygiene and sake production. But how are they not hung over? I don't get that. Oh man, they train their, themselves. They're constantly tasting. Sake is like such a, it, everything is monitored, you know, like it, it could change from like, uh, I don't know, like, a, like fermentation could be affected by anything, right? Mm -hmm. So they're constantly drinking and constantly checking. But I'm sure because they're, you know, the brewers are all together, um, you know, uh, for six months, and they're all having dinner together uh, every night um, that they're just conditioned the, their bodies to be able to drink gratuitous amounts of sake. Oh, sake <laughs> machines. Wow. Very yeah. impressive. Also just incredible the, the work that they do. If you haven't seen what sake production looks like, there are some documentaries on, on Netflix and on other places where you can actually see how they actually move into the brewery for six months at a time or, or whatever duration and, you know, really pay attention to every detail. If you've ever seen, um, um, uh, like, like sushi documentaries and things where it's really such an art, I, I just found that incredible. Are there, are there any docs that you'd recommend? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, the Todorigawa sake that I was talking about earlier, they uh, had a documentary called The Birth of Sake. Mm. It used to be on Netflix, but it was filmed in 2013 um, or 2012. Anyway, it's a beautiful documentary. Um, you get to really uh, s like see and experience the, the process and, and what it takes. Um, wow. The family, again, has been there, or the brewing sake for 150 years. I think they're on the sixth generation. Uh, mm -hmm. Yasuki-san uh, had just become uh, Toji president, um, you know, after um, traveling the world, after brewing sake, um, he is now uh, president and Toji. Incredible. There's so much history that... Uh... I need to learn that we all need to learn if we're if we're into sake. But I just have one last question for you. Um, I know in Quebec you're doing mixed cases, but you're not doing mixed cases in Toronto, I believe. Um, and as things progress, as restaurants reopen in both provinces and in other provinces in, in Canada, what do you think will be the future of uh, of, of sake in restaurants? Uh, do you do you plan to shift back to selling? more to restaurants or do you think that this is a transition in a positive uh, direction for you selling directly to consumers? Um, I think the, the, the model of it, uh, uh, it has changed quite a bit. Uh, when uh, the restaurants come back, um, it, I don't think it's going to change uh, um, the way that they handle things. I think it's still gonna be heavily delivery and takeout of course. But the fact that it's almost like we had to work more now that we've had to come up, you know, with a creative way mm. to get sake um, uh, awareness, especially here, 
Um, in Ontario, uh, they have uh, quite the sake scene already. But when, you know, having these uh, sort of uh, free webinars uh, uh, and have it complemented by uh, a sake set that they would sell in on, uh, Ontario, um, um, those, those really uh, sort of help us out and, and uh, have done really well, have done really well. And, and we're very lucky to have such great suppliers um, who, are, who are able to, to uh, provide um, you know, the, the, the help and the, the information uh, for our webinars. Hmm. Well, I, I will say I really appreciated the last one. And I love the idea that you can get sake delivered to your place in time for these webinars so that you can drink along with people all over the world in Australia, in, in Europe, uh, and in Canada and the US. So I, uh, I, I am very appreciative of that. And I will, I will cheers you for, for, for one last, uh, one last toast here to, to say thank you for your webinars. And thanks for your time today. Come by. Come by. Thank you for your support. I'm going to have all the contacts for the places we mentioned on the show notes for this episode, wherever you got this podcast, whether that's the video version of iTunes or Vimeo or the audio version on Spotify or Stitcher. And you can find both on my blog, multiculturiosity.com. You can also get in touch that way. Uh, and I'll have another episode for you next week when I'll be talking with Elise Taste of the restaurant website Taste. We'll be talking about the future of restaurants, food tours, and her digital business model. Thanks for listening. Talk to you soon.